For today's lesson, we will begin working with the uh, coordinate plane or coordinate grid. And that is created when you have two number lines that intersect each other at a right angle. So here we have an example of a uh, coordinate plane. And we've got a few things that we need to make sure that we're aware of with this. As you see, we do have a vertical and a horizontal number line that have intersected. And at the end of our horizontal line, we see an X. And that's why we refer to that horizontal line as the X axis. And you'll see at the top of our vertical line, we have a Y. And we refer to that as the Y axis. When the horizontal and vertical number line intersect, they do form four areas, four regions, and these are known as quadrants. And each quadrant is given a specific designation. So the one in the upper right, that is quadrant one. In the upper left, you have quadrant two. In the lower left, this would be quadrant three. And in the lower right, we have quadrant four. The quadrants kind of give you the general area, whereas the ordered pairs give you more specific. This intersection that we have right here, that is called the origin. And the origin is where we start. Anytime we plot points on the coordinate plane, we will start at the origin. In order to work in the coordinate plane, you need to have what are called ordered pairs. And our ordered pairs consist of an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And yes, they must be put in that order or else you'll be in the wrong location. So for our origin, the ordered pair of the origin is 0, 0. So those two number lines are intersecting at their zeros, which means as you move to the right on the horizontal number line, you have positive numbers. As you move to the left, you have negative. And then for the y-axis, as you move up, those are your positive numbers. And as you move down, those are your negative numbers. So on the coordinate plane, we have multiple uh, standards that we will be uh, utilizing. Uh, six NS6 talks about uh, points in the plane with negative number coordinates. 6NS6B, talking about uh, reflections <coughs> and how the signs indicate order. Excuse me on that. 6NSC, finding position, uh, pairs of integers and other rational numbers on a coordinate plane. And then 6G3, which is a geometry standard on draw polygons in the coordinate plane, which will be in our next lesson after this one. So right here, this just kind of reiterates a few of the things that we just did on that coordinate plane example. Uh, two number lines intersect. Horizontal is called the X. Vertical is called the Y. Uh, point of intersection is the origin. And then the four quadrants, which are quadrants one, two, three, and four. So here we have a coordinate plane that has some uh, points on it. And so let's take a look at those. So there's a couple ways that you can identify uh, the points. So if we look at point A and we want to get its ordered pair, its ordered pair would be 2, 3. Because to get to point A, you'd have to go to the right two places and then up 3. Because remember, our X coordinate goes first, our Y coordinate goes second. Another way we can identify it is we can say that point A is in quadrant 1. Point B would have an ordered pair of negative 2, 3, because we have to move to the left 2, which means we're going into our negatives, and then up 3 to get to B. And B is in quadrant 2. Point C is an ordered pair of negative 2, negative 3, because you have to go to the left 2 and down 3, so that makes it both negatives. And C is in quadrant 3. 
D has an ordered pair of 2, negative 3. So you have to go to the right 2, so that's positive. Down 3, which is negative. And that puts D in quadrant 4. Point E has an ordered pair of 5, 0. Because you go to the right, 5, which makes it positive. But then you don't go up or down at all from there. So you've moved 0 spots on your y-axis. And point E is not in quadrant 1. It's not in quadrant 4. It is on the x-axis. Point F has an ordered pair of 0, 5, because we don't move at all on the x-axis, and we go up 5 spots on the y-axis. And just like point E is on an axis, point F is on the y-axis. Point G, we've gone to the left 5, so it's negative 5, and we haven't moved at all, so it's at 0. And G is on the x-axis. And then H has an ordered pair of 0, negative 5, because once again you don't move at all on the x-axis, and you go down 5 spots on the y-axis. Now we have a few other relations with these points that we um, need to address. So I'm going to remove what I've just written up there. Hopefully you've got it down. If not, you can always pause here and finish getting that information down. But let's go ahead and erase this because we've got a little more work to do um, with these points. You can think of the x-axis and the y-axis as mirrors. And in mirrors, we have reflections. So some of these points are reflections of each other. For example, point A and B are reflections. And they are reflections across the Y axis. which means C and D are also reflected across the y-axis, and E and G are reflected across the y-axis as well. Now, one thing that you'll notice about the ordered pairs. In the ordered pair for A and B, since they're reflected across the y-axis, you should notice that their y-coordinates are the same. And you should also notice that their x-coordinates are opposites. If you look at points C and D, their y-coordinates are the same, their x-coordinates are opposites. And if you look at the ordered pairs for E and G, the y-coordinates are the same, and the x-coordinates are opposites. Well, we have other reflections taking place. We're going to come back to that point I made in just a minute here. Because we have other reflections that occur. A and D are reflections. And they're reflections across the x-axis. So if A and D are reflected across the x-axis, so are B and C and F and H. So in our previous example, if they're reflected across the y-axis, we notice that their y-coordinates were the same and the x were opposites. Well, if they're being reflected across the x-axis, if you notice your ordered pairs for A and D, their x-coordinates are the same, their y-coordinates are opposites. For B and C, the x-coordinates are the same, the y's are opposites. And then for F and H, their x-coordinates are the same, and the y's are opposites. So from this we can determine that whichever axis you're being reflected across, that coordinate stays the same. So reflect across the y-axis, y-coordinate stays the same. 
reflected across the x-axis, x-coordinate stays the same. And then the other coordinate becomes its opposite. So we're going to give the coordinates of points P, Q, R, S, T, U, and V, and we're going to determine which quadrant each point is located. So for point P, we notice that point P is at 3, 0, and it's on the x-axis. Point Q is at negative 3, 3, and it's in quadrant 2. R is at negative 5, 1, and it's in quadrant 2. S is at negative 6, negative 4, and it's in quadrant 3. T has an ordered pair of negative 4, negative 7, and it is also in quadrant 3. U is 4, negative 5, and it's in quadrant 4. And V is at the ordered pair of 3, negative 2, and it is also in quadrant 4. So now we need to plot our points. Remember, for plotting points, you always start at the origin. So for um, A, we start at the origin, and we go to the left 4, and up 3, and there's our point for A. Always make sure you label the points. For B, we go to the right 3, down 4. Oops, nice, I made a mark there when I was going to my spot. There's B. So right three, down four. For C, we go to the right five. We don't go up or down at all because our Y coordinate is zero. And there's C. <coughs> Excuse me. For D, we don't go to the left or right at all, so we go down five. And there's our point for D. For E, we go to the left two, down one. There's E. And for F, we go to the right two, and down one, and there's our spot for F. So for our reflections, once again, it's important to know which axis we are reflecting across. So in these examples, we're reflecting across the x-axis. So when you reflect across the x-axis, x stays the same, y becomes the opposite x stays the same, y becomes the opposite. x stays the same, y becomes the opposite. x stays the same, y becomes its opposite. So when we go across the y-axis, x becomes the opposite, y stays the same. x becomes the opposite, y stays the same. X becomes its opposite, Y stays the same. X becomes its opposite, Y stays the same. And that is all for today's lesson. As always, I hope this helps.